Once again, you are welcome to the ultimate voyage through the fabric of human existence. Culture Scarps Trekking Join us as we take you on an exciting journey through times, revealing the secrets of the past, present, and even the mysterious passageways of prehistoric times. As we go across the cosmos and explore the core of human history, culture, and existence, I'm ecstatic to be your guide. Reveals a profound connection to the land and its resources. Nalo and the shores of Lake Victoria, illustrating the significance of these natural landmarks in Lua heritage. In celebrating the Luo community's intangible cultural heritage, the National Museums of Kenya beckon all to explore the intricate tapestry of traditions that have shaped this remarkable ethnic group. From sacred rituals to everyday practices, the Luo's cultural resilience and adaptability stand as a testament to the enduring vitality of Kenya Say, whom during by Say Heritage Sage. Shrines, trees, huge rocks, hills, and Lake Victoria were associated with the supernatural. Luanda Major was a famous warrior in Kano Village, Wagor, Mahayo. Luanda Major, one of the most famous football clubs in Kenya, is named after Gormahaya. The rich tapestry of Kenyan heritage unfolds through the myriad stories and traditions of its diverse peoples and intricate melodic into three linguistic groups. Recognized by the government, each contributing to the country's ethnic diversity. The National Museums of Kenya serve as custodians of artifacts that narrate these tales, preserving the vibrant cultures that have shaped the nation. In this kaleidoscope of cultural exploration, attention turns to the Luo community, the fourth largest ethnic group in Kenya, speaking the Nihilatic Lango, Barack Obama, and Professor Sam Odingo among their ranks, settling around the Lake Victoria Basin in Kenya and Tanzania, with diasporic communities in Uganda, Congo, Ethiopia, and Sudan. Their spiritual landscape is painted with reverence for Nyasei, the Creator, worshipped in sacred places like Hemko or Hempo. Legends like Luanda Major and Gormahaya emerge, blending historical narratives with mythical identity of rock, becomes a symbol of invincibility until a shadowy vulnerability events. Luo's social fabric intricately weaves together clans, supreme chiefs, Ruth, and a council of elders, all adorned with regalia reflecting their status. Initiation rites, like the removal of six front teeth, test courage and endurance, while cobra bones find multifacity use in healing and protection. The Lua's original pastoralist and fish and life as style into a harmonious blank the abu and the fiddle permeates Lua Lua lo life. Today, as cultural practices persist, they bear the imprints of societal changes. The Lua heritage, a tapestry of customs, language and unity remains resilient in the face of evolving times. A saga that traverses South Sudan, 
like Victoria's shores and diverse landscapes, adds another layer to the unfolds with tales of encounters. The low community with its intricate simulation, Tarangalua, Sarati Luas, Imboluos, and others, encapsulates the dynamism of their evolution. From the early waves of migration led by Ramoji Adwang, to the cultural assimilation with groups like the Durango, Tizarati, and Imbo, the Lu history weaves a complex but harmonious narrative. In contemporary Kenya, the Lu community stands a polygynous peoples. Today's no fractions of Lu presences, community warriors, distinct identity, and cultural expressions, remains an integral part of Kenya's vibrant mosaic, inviting all to celebrate the intangible cultural heritage that defines this great nation. A long time ago, a story is told of a Luo legend who was a mighty warrior from Kano. He was called Luanda Major from the Sido clan. It was believed that his body was made of hard rock and nothing could harm him. The Luo were in constant conflict, he smat. The Luanda. The Luo always triumphed in the war as many enemies fell by Luanda spear. The time came when, during Luanda, the first wife's absence, he fell seriously ill. The local medicine man prescribed some herbs that had to be rubbed on Luanda's body. Since his first wife was absent, the second wife had to undertake that task. To her surprise, Luanda asked her to cut into the pool of insanity. After cutting his strato, that that, that was, was where his strength hey. <laughs> Disbelief when blood trickled from his shadow. On this discovery, Luanda, second wife, crept out in the night ran to her people and relayed the information. The Nandi strategized and attacked the Lu once again. During the attack, Luanda's shadow was struck by a spear, and he fell lifeless on the battlefield. The Nandi were ecstatic about their victory, whereas the Lu were filled with great dismay following the loss of a great warrior. A rock stands at the spot where Luanda and Toragedly fell. A The council of elders were under a supreme chief who gave many prophecies that came true including a prophecy where baby-like creatures were manifested who were unstoppable as locusts. He warned the courageous warriors not to kill them because they had sticks that spat fire guns. The extent of his magic was so powerful that herbalists visiting of several families and headed by a clan elder. A council of elders were under a supreme chief, Ruth, and played the bide, abide, 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 to the supreme elder. All Lu leaders wore special regalia and had special items which portrayed their status, including headdresses, a spear, special robes, a fly whisk, and a stool. The Lu initiation was done by removing six front teeth from the lower jaw. The significance of this rite was to test courage and endurance of both men and women and also to administer medicine in case of diseases such as lockjaw.